Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, a bit of a change in direction again. Back to the Neo Geo stuff. So this is a two slot. It's a subtly different revision to the two slot I showed before. Um, on first inspection, the slots are super clean. Let me show you. They are super clean and tidy. But it's definitely a different revision. Although it's got the same main chipset on here, it's just laid out differently. Um, because the ZMC is right up here next to the dip switches. Um, there's some corrosion here. This is probably where the issue is going to be, if I'm honest. Um, and these chips here, these are 257s. 257, that's an E0, I think. Or is it a G0? It's a G0, actually. Um, yeah, so some corrosion down this side here, but it's fairly superficial. The, the bit that's most affected are these wires here, and they're really, really fine on these boards. So my guess is that's going to be the issue. So obviously, it's the battery, you know, this bit green here. Uh, and obviously that bit of corrosion, yeah, it's started to spread out this way. So hopefully I can get this working. This is uh, going to go to Stephen Leary, actually, uh, just as a, a thank you from me to say uh, thanks for all the hard work on the terrible fireboards, because he got a copy of Xeno Crisis because he helped out um, with the Xeno Crisis when we were having some issues with that. Um, and Bitmap Bureau kindly sent him uh, a collector's edition cart, I think, for the MBS. So I've uh, sort of followed up really with this. I thought we'll do this as a video, we'll get this repaired. I won't tell you how much it was, but I got a good deal on it, so it's, uh, it's not breaking the bank. Yeah, there's a little bit of corrosion here, can you see that? Some black points, and it isn't dirt, it is just a little bit of corrosion. Um, so this is described as having some lines, I think, through the graphics, perhaps on one slot or the other, or maybe both. So I think, other than the in initial inspection I've done on the top side, I'll have a quick look on the underside. Uh, yeah, it's got these things here for the battery and stuff still, and it has one down here as well. They're quite common to have those. Um, but I don't see any scratches or anything. And this has got a top, by the way, but I've just taken that off. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, there's a few things riveted onto it, which is a bit strange, so we might drill those out, or Stephen might want to drill those out, I don't know, well, we'll just see, and obviously it's very dirty, um, but it is in really good condition, as far as I'm concerned, it could be a lot worse, it's a bit fluffy around here, but that's mostly dust, I think, that's an E0, uh, and obviously it's got uh, an EEPROM there, so I'm not sure whether it's got a Unibars or what, yeah, those rams there look uh, perfected, don't they, on the top side, so those are going to need a reflow. So let's get the super gun here. So this uh, provides a connector here for an ATX power supply, so you can power it. But it also has a SCART socket um, and two Neo Geo controller ports here, and sound out as well. You can plug speakers. Um, you've got to remember that they're amplified, so you wouldn't want to. It's not like line out to that. These things, uh, unless it's a special one that's got a line out facility, you'll tend to find it's amplified stereo. So yeah, be careful what you plug into the uh, speaker output there. So ATX power supply connected, let's switch that on, and that's a good sign, we've got a cross hatch, so uh, yeah, seems to be described uh, accurately there. So I'll switch it off, I'm going to connect one of my carts here, I'm going to get uh, Gam Gam in there, just checking that's the right way it is, switch it on, and we'll test each slot, so you can see lines there straight away. Obviously got no sound just now, it's not got speakers connected, but that is looking exactly as it was described. So switching off, I'm just going to change over to the other slot. You may expect a difference. Yeah, they're looking the same, aren't they? So that could just be something around the ZMC, actually. Yeah, just sort of pressing around the ZMC there. I saw a difference. See that? That was me just pressing down. And actually, the lines have gone. The lines have gone there, so. I think I've fixed it already almost. You saw a line down, up, oh, down the display there though. So, we need a static screen, don't we? Uh, yeah, I'm sure that's the ZMC. Pressing the ZMC. And I see some issues. Let me just press the pins again. Oh, I wish it'd stay stationary. Yeah, you see that? So, I've got speaker connected. Let's just. Uh Adjust the uh, volume here. Yeah, so the volume pot works. Let's just wait for some more sound. Sweet. Yeah, that's working. Obviously, we don't know at this stage whether left and right are working. I don't hear anything missing. It sounds like we have PCM and we have 
the FM sort of stuff and what have you. Now, if the 257s are balked, I could always source one of those from Furtec because he has some replacement uh, modern little boards he's created. You know, they've got uh, the, the relevant chips on there. It comprises, I think, 274, oh, sorry, 474 257s. There might be another IC on there as well, but yeah, you can buy those from Furtec's store. There'll be a link down below. So I think I've seen enough now to make me want to just start working on this. We can check out the ports and stuff later. It's obviously it's got a card slot on this so we can test save facility and all that. Um, the card slots do look unused though. They barely, barely mark on them, they look brand new. So let's get the battery off. So I can desolder it later. At this point I'm just gonna just chop this off because it's got that massive spongy thing on the underside. I'll show you, you can see it. And I don't really want to remove that at this stage. Um, so we'll just uh, trim it. There's two places there. So let's just clean around there with a bit of white vinegar. I'd be interested to see if we get any fizzing up. A little bit there. Yeah, those pins there are the worst affected. Definitely. So it might need a uh, new G0. Mm, that could be a problem. Not sure if Fertec has a replacement for those. So I'll just get a piece, let's get a piece of paper towel under there because I'm just going to have a little uh, brush around. Actually, it's the only way to be sure uh, that you get the vinegar right under the pins and stuff. I'll just leave it for a minute or two. Quite a lot there actually, more than I wanted to do really if I'm honest. It's uh, spreading as well. Just get the excess off the tops of those. And there's a bit of excess here really, we don't need so much. Right, let's just uh, start to mop up the majority of this. I think what I'm going to do next is just get the fiberglass pen onto here really carefully and just see how much of this, there you go, they're coming up quite silvery there, yeah how much is actual corrosion, how much is just a bit of oxidisation, look at that, that's come up a lot better, other than down here, that ZMC almost looks good as new. Let's try this side because that side's looking pretty dark as well, look yeah. Again, superficial. I mean, in an ideal situation with this is get a bit of flux on it, reflow it, and find it works. That would be incredible. I don't think that's going to happen. I think these wires here are going to be something to do with it, and we may have uh, a fault on one of these chips. That is just looking so much better already there. So I go this side, same here. Certainly the tops are much about the bottom of the pins. Oh yeah, they're coming up as well. A little bit of corrosion there. You want to be gentle. Yeah, pleasantly surprised with that. Right, I've done a bit of cleaning up there, so I'll scrub with some IPA now. But you can see the pins are a lot better. It's still these two here primarily. Well, that one as well a little bit, but anyway, I figure it's a good idea to do this. You're getting the uh, contaminants and stuff off there, uh, and it's conductive. So if you've got the electrolyte from a battery uh, sat on there, it can conduct between you know adjacent pins and things like that. But I suspect with those wires, I reckon that's what's going to be wrong. And we can start to sort of uh, mop it up, start up here. Because I think what I would do with this area is put a lot of IPA like that and blow with some uh, hot air, not too hot. Um, just to blow like around and underneath, etc. But that is just looking so much better already. 
I mean, look at the ZMC. <laughs> it looks shiny and new. It looks shiny and new. Right, I'm going to go give that another try. I've uh, just blow dried the uh, board there. So you can still see we've got lots of uh, corrosion here, here, and here. But look at the ZMC, it's so much better. It really is. This was as bad as those. That's the worst one, but I'm not sure that that's actually causing the immediate issue. I think it's going to be these vines here. So it's no difference. One thing I did notice is the uh, top slot near the edge of the board. There's no sound. We didn't test both slots for sound. We just, you know, put it in the first slot, put it in the second one, and then end of the speaker. So yeah, the sound's still there, but it's not on the top slot. This slot up here, that one works. So I'm just now going to clean around here. Some of this I'm going to have to do under magnification. I'm just going to wipe over these gently, see if we can expose them, and pull back a little bit where this corroded and then try and tin this stuff up but as you can see <laughs> nothing's happening it's not bringing anything off the surface there I don't see any gold anyway I'll report back in a minute right after a little bit of work with the fiberglass you can see we've got some uh, gold up here in there most of those vias and the ones down here there's still some up here around the uh, I don't know there's a 32 is it LS32 or HC32 so right, let's see what that looks like now and then we'll get a bit of flux and a drag over those and then we can do connectivity we can uh, pull that pad off the other side make sure these vines are going through to the other side that's going to be painful to do a bit time consuming because you have to keep you know flipping the board over trying to balance it on its side and measure from one side to the other it's not the easiest thing might need more work with the fiberglass pen yeah should do. Now I really need my other iron for this but my iron has died. I'm using just the Heiko and it's got the wrong kind of tip really. Having said that, a small tip, yeah you don't want a massive amount of uh, heat here, you just want a small amount so this might, might do the job I think. Yeah it seems to be doing the job though. Don't really need to press very hard the braid with the solder on it and the flux just transfers the heat anyway I'll report back in a minute so I'll see if I can just show you this this pin here it comes all the way down here to there I think um, let me just confirm that somewhere along here had a join um, yeah it's so fine this I'm not even sure I can see to show you yeah you can hear we've got join there yeah but if you follow it, it goes all the way up here no join there's actually resistance on the meter so I've tested the other ones gone on the ZMC here down here so it's just this outer one which is the one nearest to the battery so we need a wire from well I'll see if we can work out with the breakers but we need a wire from that wire to uh, you know it's pin over here so that's certainly one problem that may well fix the video entirely the sound you know one of the slots not working I'm thinking maybe this G0 I don't know whether the sound goes that way right all connected up you in for this I think this is going to fix the graphical issue oh yes there we go because it was kind of like one line it didn't look like one line but in terms of the uh, width there it looked to me like one line so that one line is now fixed. Hopefully the graphics will be 100%. It's looking that way, isn't it? It's just a question of in-game, you know, like you've got the S layer, the C layer. Yeah, everything's looking fine. Hey, fantastic. Oh yes. Steven will be a happy bunny. I'm pleasantly surprised with that. That has probably been one of the easiest MVS repairs ever. I mean, alright, I still need to do a lot of reflowing on those three ICs, uh, but I mean, provided I don't kill them with a bit of heat there, I feel confident this is going to be alright. So it's just that sound issue on the other slot and clean up now, I think. What a pickup. 
that was a really good pickup. Yeah, just testing the other slot, the graphics are fine, we're just lacking the sound, so there is just a sound issue. I've got the feeling the sound issue is going to take me ages to work out. It's got to be something really weird, like a vibe in the middle of the board or something, or a, you know, a trace somewhere underneath the slot that I can't see. So yeah, this I'm not looking forward to trying to resolve. I've tried moving the cart, reseating it, etc. It doesn't seem to make any difference, there's just no sound on that slot. So you can see I've just overflowed this side here. I'll show you the process on these. These are far worse. Um, and I'll, obviously I'll do up here as well, I think, on uh, you know the sides of these. Maybe just near the edge. I don't need to do all the way around. Uh, but certainly there, here, here, uh, here and here. Uh, and obviously this side. This side here is not so bad, but I would certainly do that side. So obviously I've used the fiberglass brush, I've used the vinegar of you know a number of passes there. Fiberglass has been on there three or four times and it's looking a lot better but it's been pretty dull so we'll just get some flux along here. And then what I'll do is I'll attempt to add some solder to start with. So I'm not bothered about this being particularly clean at this stage. Uh, I'm going to do it with the fan on really, I'm going to switch the fan on. So yeah, some, as you can see, are flowing really well, others may not, but then we'll remove this with some braid. Just get a bit more. That reflowed okay, actually, but we'll just cut the braid and just mop that up. These two caps here may need to come off, but I probably will take them off, actually, as well as some of the other through-hole stuff. And we'll just have a bobbin and try and remove that solder now. Most of that's come off. Just have another pass. There we go. The other thing I'll do at this stage is, using the braid we've got here, is drag across the tops of the pins here, just gently. in order to clean the top up. See that's not too bad, let's just flip it. And we're still a little bit in the middle there I think. That's not too bad actually. And then finally, uh, a little bit more flux here. I haven't got the right tip to do drag solder in here but we'll just uh, gradually add a little bit of solder onto each one of these. I'll try and drag if I can. Yeah, it's not going to drag very well. I'm going to bridge some but... I really need the Antex iron to arrive. Hopefully that might arrive in this video. But you can see already how much cleaner that's looking. Got too much solder on one or two places here. And perhaps too little in others. So hopefully you'll agree. That just looks so much better now. It will do when I've cleaned it. Well I'll show you where we're up to in a minute. In the meantime I want to change the tip. I've had this switched off for an hour. We'll also clean off that bit of uh, plastic off there as well. So. So take that off, carefully put that down. Uh, yeah, this oh, bits of rubbish there falling out, look, uh, soot. And let's have a go with this one. So it goes through there, and then this goes in there like that. And, and then we turn it up. Yeah, I think that's going to be much better, that chisel. And as I say, while I'm here, I'm just going to get the wire brush onto that bit of plastic or whatever it is there. I think I've just touched the glue some hot glue on there and I might have just touched it. So here's a quick look, so I reflowed here, reflowed here, I want to reflow them again though with that chisel tip, certainly the end points here because they're a bit bulgy, they stick out and it looks a bit uneven. Um, I may reflow this side here, I might even just go all the way around that ZNC because that is the nearest chip to this. These will come off, that'll come off, uh, this is where I touched the iron actually in that hot glue, there's some hot melt glue on the side there, you can see. 
Um, so yeah, I replace that. I usually replace that cap in that area, um, and then these things will have to be taken off, clean them up, clean up the pads, and then reintroduce them. Um, these pro caps will probably have to come off as well. And then this side here, I'll just do the same thing of you know clean the fiberglass pen, add some flux, suck up the solder with the solder braid, uh, reflow it, use the solder braid again, and then uh, give a final pass. They'll probably come up like new those. So this side's fine, uh, and then this here needs reflowing as well. But I've not quite finished here yet because I've, you can see I removed the wire there and obviously the line is back, I tested that. Um, test at various points when you're doing work like this as well actually. Just make sure it's still working as you've done, you know, so a bit of reflowing around a few things. Because you could introduce a fault by damaging one of the, the traces you're trying to fix um, and then add to that problem as you just go on and on and on as you do lots of work. And then you come to test and you've got a couple of different issues and you don't really know what's caused it. So there is advantage in testing as you go along. Once we've got this off I can fix these traces here. Um, now there is a problem with the real time clock. Uh, I'm not sure if I showed you that. It's coming up with calendar error as soon as you switch it on. So there is a calendar error as well and it's going to be these traces here. Probably one of these long ones, I would think. Um, and we need to obviously fix that wire. So I'm going to use um, some coil wire to do that. I'll uh, solder it, the wire there through to the other side. And I'll trail it right down here, anchor it there. And then trail it a little bit further along and anchor it somewhere here. So that you can't see it. So let's just try a uh, reflow there. I did just clean that with the uh, fiberglass pen. Just getting some solder on here. It's a brand new tip. So let's give that a wipe. And we'll just add a tiny little bit of solder on here. I just want to see what this looks like as it uh, reflows. This tip I'm not used to using, so just bear with me a minute. I'm at a weird angle as well, so you can't really see what I'm doing. Yeah, you can see some of those have reflowed, others not so much. Did I say much? I meant much. Yeah, those ones in the middle there are a little bit corroded. One there. Just hovering over them for a second or two to allow the heat to activate the flux. Mm, that's not bad actually for the first pass. Alright, it's uneven. Right, I just need to uh, inspect that with magnification, I think. Right, so that's the first phase of that repair done. I need to clean, I haven't cleaned yet. Um, I fixed this trace here, I used some coil wire. It's, um, it joins the wire there, you can see that, that wire is uh, filled. And then the coil wire comes down here on the trace, it's joined here onto the trace, comes around the bend and it's joined here on the trace. But actually you can't feel it and you can't see it. So uh, yeah, I think that's a successful uh, bodge. So we'll take it over there again. I want to go and see if it still works. Uh, and if it does, then we're on to this area, really. And then the final cleanup. Yep, all good so far. Just hit select. Turn the fighters. Shut that down a smidge. So the interesting thing with the sound, as I may have mentioned earlier, two carts in. Sound works on both slots. You don't get sound there until it starts here. Yeah. So sound on both slots. Don't get it. Don't get why both carts have got to be in. That could be a Unibios 4 thing. There might not actually be a fault. Um, and obviously if one cart's on the board on its own, as long as it's in slot one, you get sound. I uh, don't know, that's really, really weird. It's really hard to get that light glare off the screen, but if I just show you something, if I switch it off and on, uh, we'll hold ABC, we'll go, Disable hardware test that was uh, enabled, so that's, should now hardware test it. We'll choose exit, exit. It'll boot normally, but then you've got to power cycle it, and you should see. There you go, calendar error. So we do have that issue to deal with, but I think we'll fix that when we remove that HC32 and fix the traces around it. So this is why I've been putting this part off, this blooming spongy thing. I seriously hate this part because trying to get that off is never easy. Some would uh, lead you to believe that adding some IPA, in fact I'll get a cap of IPA, let's just pour it, um, will free it up. But uh, yeah, from my experience, 
that does help a little bit sometimes but what happens more often than not is it just dissolves so if we just like tilt it this way I don't know try and get the IPA under the edge there you can leave it to soak I found it doesn't make any difference at all you've got to just start to peel this and you can see it's disintegrating already <sighs> really hate this who at SNK thought that was a good idea to stick a spongy thing on the underside of it Sometimes if you can sort of get this to stay in one piece here, it may peel, but I don't know, is that going to peel? Oh, I hate this stuff. It's like really stiff as well. It's like, why does the back separate from it? That's what annoys me. Look, it just does that. So, oh, we're back in about two hours when I've got it off. I've tried heat, I've tried APA, I've tried cold. It's just like, it dissolves, it's just awful. I just hate it. <laughs> Have I said that already? I hate it. I really hate it. If I just sort of try and use something to spudge under it, obviously you've got to be very careful because you could damage traces, you could damage solder points. Occasionally, when I find a little bit like that, I'll sort of twist into it and sometimes it'll come off sometimes it won't like that it sticks to your fingers and you can't get rid of it it's just uh, the most annoying thing ever there's some solder points here which makes this bit quite hard solder points there oh, God. this bit there look let's see if we can somehow with this you can sort of roll like that oh it's coming up a look oh my goodness Maybe that's the technique, forwards, backwards. But some bits seem to be more easy to disintegrate than others. You know, like this bit here seems to be lifting. Look, honestly, this dissolving there. Look. Yeah, there's a bit where it's separated. So, I should take these feet off here. It might make it a bit easier. God damn it. It's one of those things that if you've got an apprentice, get your apprentice to do it. Trust me. I've been at this for 45 minutes already. Look, I'm resort to using my nail now. Because you just can't shift it at all. It doesn't matter what you do with it. I think the only thing I haven't tried is acetone. I could try that. I don't know. I think I'm going to need to soak my hand in acetone after I finish this to get all the stickiness off it. Right, I've had about enough as I can take from one day off this board. The rest of it's going to have to wait till tomorrow. You can see we've got it right off there. There's some glue and little bits of the black stuff here. Um, edging away it with a cotton bud and with IPA seems to work a little bit, but you've got to edge and edge and edge. I've been at it for, I don't know, an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 45 which is why I've just had enough. I just can't be dealing with this. I need to just go clean all this stuff up. And I'm going to be finding this for days. It's like it's stuck on the underside of the board. It's blooming everywhere. Right, so for the clock stuff, I've not really shown it, but I just scoped the clock there. And using the Rigel, I was getting weird stuff like 5 kilohertz. It should be 32.768. Now, I then scoped the main 24 megahertz crystal there on times 10 in both uh, situations here and 24 megahertz no problem so I'm thinking that crystal could be dead actually so I'm gonna swap that oh god I've just realized it's under there I am NOT pulling that off I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna desolder this from the top side actually I honestly cannot be bothered removing that foam from the underside right that crystal made no difference uh, so the crystal must be all right it's probably the 4990 so what I'm going to do now is use some hot air. I'm not even going to attempt to dissolve this. I've done enough of these to know that the best way to get them off actually is with hot air. So we'll just heat around this. And uh, after a minute or two, once it gets up to temperature, I will just pull it off with the uh, removal tool here. We'll socket it up, but we need to get underneath there. God, that stinks. It's the corrosion stuff that's around that area.
yeah the pads are tiny on these the wires are tiny it is really really easy to deal, uh, deal damage you know it's almost there it's almost there it's coming up on that side look it's this side here There we go. That was pretty pain free. So I'll clean around there with uh, a bit of vinegar. I'll obviously unblock these holes in a minute. I may even use braid to do that actually. It's probably easier than trying to wrestle with uh, those holes in the desolder pump. So I'll uh, go with the fiberglass pen next. And uh, yeah, these these want to turn up, so let's just go to town on these. Best thing to do is clean with vinegar after you've got these looking goldish, and then it just etches a little bit, it makes the solder bite ever so uh, marginally better, certainly with good flux. I'm going to do them right down here because they are pretty close to the battery may even be detached here, that might be the issue. So that there is a VCC I think, and it, that wire is terrible. I did measure that, it does seem to have 5 volts going through it and to that pin. So it's been more of a vlog this, because I really haven't shown much, but I've shown it on other videos before, so yeah, we flowed down here, turned up all of the wires and traces around here, measured connectivity, you know, like you've got a connection between there and there, there and there, uh, this resistor here comes around to there I think and then these wires through to here, through to the other side so everything there is okay, obviously it needs more of a clean but I'm going to get that socket on next I think, we'll clean up the legs on the chip, get the chip back in uh, maybe have a toothbrush around this area, still got these things here so I'll be cleaning up again afterwards those little black bits, I've been finding them everywhere, they're just like over everything uh, there's still a few here, look you can see just little bits of it but they've all gone now, I think. Now the good news is we no longer have the graphics faults, the sound fault is a non-fault, and the real-time clock is working, the 4990. There's no calendar error <laughs> as a result of fixing around here. It was probably some conductivity around these pins here, maybe, or one of the things I've reflowed there. So it's really weird, but the problem is gone. Now I don't like it when things like that happen because you're left wondering is it intermittent, is it one of these vines here that's not so clever, you know what is actually the issue, um, but the dust at the moment and there is no issue. So anyway I'm going to desolder this cap and these transistors and then see see what, whether these things need to come off, I won't be able to reflow them in situ, you know, I'm going to scratch up the, the, the solder point, use some desolder braid, suck off the old solder just like I did with these down here and they don't look too bad actually, uh, but with these here you know they'll all be off and the pads cleaned up and uh, new cap. Let's get those battery contacts out while I think ahead as well. Yeah, you see the solder's really crusty here, isn't it? So this is where it might be easier just to try and heat from this side and pull through from this side, actually. Mind you, there's so little to grab there. Not so much. Nope. All right. So besides burning myself, I have just uh, desoldered some of these things here. It doesn't look like it, but yeah, I have. Let's just move that leg there. There is a leg here. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see that here. Solder's missing here, solder's missing here. It's this side here on this diode that's sticking. Let's just move it over. Yeah, there we go. Try and get it off now. There we go, one side. That's it. So it was uh, cathode towards the top there. 
and there we go just tint up those pads there the diode pads the cap pads you just clean around it or block the holes uh, and then just inspect around and then I can reintroduce those components I'll then take off this diode and that transistor I'm doing things in a sort of weird way here I can still see the silk screen outline there of the transistor uh, but what I didn't want to do is get them flipped around the wrong way or get the transistors in the wrong order they might be different transistors etc so diode cleaned up, uh, let's test it, so it's uh, band is on the right, that's the cathode, so I'll put the black on the cathode, yeah you can see that, it's got a forward switching voltage, uh, and then to swap the probes around, we should have nothing the other way, open line, yeah we have open line the other way, so yeah the legs cleaned up with the wire brush, and the fiberglass brush, it's spotless that diode, so that can go back on. I wish my finger had fared as well, can you see that blister? It's really sore. The good news is the replacement Antex arrived, put the old tip on it. 30 blooming quid for that though. So annoying when things like that happen. Uh, I mean right, I did get a donation on a uh, video the other day, didn't I? From uh, Timo Momo, so that's uh, that's paid for that, that's uh, come at a really awful time. So thank you very much for that donation from Timo there. If you do want to support the channel, please see the coffee and Patreon links down below by the way. Uh, I do have a Discord forum as well, but uh, that's only for Patreon members, uh, I think $5 or more. I've done that deliberately because I just don't want millions and millions and millions of people asking me how to repair things every day of the week, which is what we get anyway, if I'm honest, but it's, it, there's not huge amounts of people asking the, that sort of question on there. I always try and help um, point people in the right direction. Right, so the cathode is towards the centre of the board there, you know, away from the edge. Anode at the edge. Where's the points here? Yeah, I'm going to try and use the Antex for this. Let's just see, is it up to the job? And the answer is yes. And my finger's burning. Yeah, that's not so bad. Testing the transistor there. Uh, we can have a look at the uh, parameters of this. It should show us the gain, maybe. Uh, so it's PNP silicon. So this is the left hand one nearest the battery. Uh, you can see the pin out there. In pin order, it's uh, blue, red, green. So you can see those. Current gain HFE 209. Test current 2.5 milliamp. Base emitter voltage 0.78. Test current 4.26, 4.62 milliamp. Leakage current zero. There we go. So I'll just clean the legs up on that, and that can go back on as well. So all cleaned up. That one's marked A1015. I presume it's like a 2SA1015. The next one is a C1815. 2SC, I presume. Right, I've got a brand new 47 microfarad cap here, it's a Panasonic, it's M-Class, 105 degrees. The old one was 85, can you see what's happened to the can on the underside as well? well I'm going to test that on the SR meter in a minute. Right, we're pretty much there, that cap's on, I had to move this transistor a little bit to the side, I've bent that one a little bit as well, just to accommodate that because it was a slightly bigger capacitor. I want to just clean up under here with cotton buds first, clean the underside, and then we'll have a really good scrub, and uh, what have you, on the top side. And then the bit I have been looking forward to, because this is where all of your hard work pays off, it uh, generally will look a thousand times better, so I'm just going to go over with cotton buds initially, just to do a little bit of focused cleaning here, and then we'll get the uh, toothbrush on top. So up here is looking really clean, uh, but of course the main part of the show is here. I 
So a quick look around this, you can see I started to clean up her around here already. Um, yeah, there's some bits of dust on there. But you can see how filthy it is, it's really dirty, look how dark the pins on the CPU look there. Really dirty around here, look. That's dirty, we'll clean that up next. And lots of dirt around here. Lots of dirt around here. I reflowed the two solder points there earlier and there, there were two bits of corroded connections but still look a bit dull so I'll go around that with a fiberglass pen. I'll probably go around some of these things with a fiberglass pen as well. Yeah just lots of cleaning there. Yeah, it's pretty dirty up here as well and look at the pins on the YM2610. Filthy. I won't show the cleaning of all of that I'll just uh, zoom to uh, an end result but uh, yeah let's just clean this with an eraser. It's been in a cabinet all its life that, and then taken out and uh, used in the home for a short period of time. The interesting thing is you saw it's got Unibars 4 here, I'm going to stick a label on that in a minute, I'll clean the top of it, put a label on, but it's got Unibars. When someone fitted the Unibars, why the hell didn't they take the badge off it? That, this is the thing, it never ceases to amaze me. Somebody has gone, ah, I'm going to consoleize an MVS, you know, oh I'll use a two slot, use that at home, or I can play my cards on it. They just left the badge on it. It's crazy. If you're going to get into Neo Geo stuff and arcade boards, please God, remove the batteries. And if you're really bothered about your high score uh, saves and things like that, you know, you really want a battery, fit something externally, put some wires to where the battery is, and uh, route it to uh, a battery uh, module, you know, a meter away from the thing inside the cabinet or something. Or do a CR2032 mod. Using some deoxid gold here, it's just designed for gold plated contacts like this. So, with regards to the Unibars, it came with version 4 already on it, it's the free version. I'm not sure you whether you're supposed to be able to use this you know, on an actual board or whether it's there for emulation purposes, but I think Razula no longer supports it, and I think he just kind of opened, you know, made it free to download. I think that's the case. I hope uh, Razula's okay. Because I think it was ill health that was uh, maybe the issue. But anyway, I hope it's alright. Uh, and at some point, maybe he'll be able to update it. But I tend to prefer the version before for, is it 3.4? or three point, There might be a 3.5 or 3.6, I don't know. I think a lot of mine are still on 3.4. Um, so, I mean, Stephen could just flash it with the, I don't know, the free version of 3.4. Um, the only real issue here is that uh, slot thing with the sound. If you've got one car in slot two, you don't get any sound. You've got to have both slots populated, or if you've only got one car, put it in slot one. Uh, anyway, that's that cleaned. We'll just get a, a label onto this. Just helps protect from ultraviolet light erasing it. And uh, yeah, people may think that doesn't cause a problem. I know there have been some people do videos where they blasted it with some UV for, I don't know, a few seconds or put it in the sun and it's been alright. But trust me, they do lose bits and bytes over months uh, when there's any possibility of natural light and doesn't need to be particularly bright sunlight from my experience just light landing on there so it is advantageous to cover that little window is that straight? that's about as straight as I can get it I think it's not quite central but it'll do so, uh, around two hours later, yeah, I am a glutton for punishment, I spend ages cleaning these things. So yeah, most of the dirt is removed, there's the odd bit in between some of those caps and things there, it's very hard to get out, but yeah, it's looking so much cleaner, as you can see. One thing I would point out is you can see between these pins here, the flux, the original flux that was on there, it kind of goes like white and milky, it's awful. It's the same on the, this chip here, you can't see it that way, you can perhaps from here. But I've cleaned that a number of times, you can't get it off. The only way you're going to be able to get that off is maybe with acetone, but then plastics become a problem. Or you could get some fresh flux around it and reflow it and then clean up. I'm not sure what it is, it must be the type of flux they use when they assemble these. Um, you can see it a little bit up here, you know, they don't, the pins don't look that good, but you know what? They do when you look super close. So, is it going to work after all that? Uh, we do, of course, need to get the BIOS back in. Uh, pin one on that way. Yeah, I took that back out again while I was re-cleaning around these two quad flat packs here. 
if you saw the previous two slot I did, uh, I think at the end when I was summarising, the ROM chip wasn't in right, it was like out at a little bit of an angle. Uh, anyway, I do notice these things. To get Samurai Showdown into the first slot here, arrow towards the arrow. And then, and reel about Fatal Fury Special. There we go, switch it on. Now the sound's probably right down, I think. Yeah, there we go, turned up a bit. Uh, right, I'm just going to reboot that. We'll disable the uh, self test, or enable the self test rod, because it's probably off. Let's hope we don't get a clock problem. Nope, there we go. So the clock problem is resolved after all this, all the testing I've done. It seems to have been resolved after we were flowed uh, around the HC32 there. So I'll just wait for it to cycle to the other slot. So I really do love these boards. They're so resilient, aren't they? You know, you think how long this board was probably in service, and there's very little wrong with it. If it wasn't for the blooming battery, this board would probably still be tip top. And I think I skirted over it earlier, but you can see where I soldered that crystal on top there. I just pulled the old one out and then just soldered the, the legs into the wires there. You can see I've just applied some green nail polish there. So yeah, you could argue it'll look cleaner without that, but you could just get some acetone on there. It won't harm the PCB, but it will just dissolve that really easily. So if Stephen wants to do that, you could do that. Personally, I prefer to do that because that trace is fixed, you know, that wire that comes up there, and it's a really fine wire. That's just going to protect it a little bit from touches and things, I guess, more than anything. Uh, but also, it's about covering the little bits of copper that aren't covered with the solder, uh, where they could start to corrode. Um, uh, and obviously all of the wires are exposed there, so you could do connectivity tests. And obviously you'd probably have to remove the thing to be able to see where the traces go, but it's not a permanent thing. But as I've said so many times before, it will be permanent as long as you want it to be permanent. So yeah, as you can see, uh, everything looking clean and tidy. Sorry if you get in travel sickness while I move this around. And obviously the slots are like new. They really are, they've had no, next to no use. Just look, they look brand new. So, let's get its uh, feet back on. So this is the shell. Uh, you can see it says uh, 5,5 5 volts here. I'm gonna remove that, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, it says okay, well clearly it wasn't. Uh, and then someone's put these rivets. I don't know if this is an aftermarket thing. I guess so, because look, the spacing is not really equal here and someone's riveted on uh, these things here so what I would say to Stephen is if he doesn't want these or they're hindering in some kind of way I'd get rid of them if this was mine it's just drill the centre there and pop the rivets off it's the same down here, these have been bent I think originally they, they perhaps would have held, a, uh, held the car up maybe I don't know, they were something like that it's a bit of a weird thing that but it's got the original labels and stuff on this and you know what, other than a couple of little dots of rusty I'll wipe over this with some uh, WD-40 it's in good condition and I think Stephen will either use this with a super gun or maybe get a cabinet. So it doesn't really need to be that presentable. So the easy way to do this is to get the PCB on top of there like that. You know, do it upside down. And then each corner we've got a foot and a uh, screw. So oh yeah, this is the fiddly bit. Get the screw through here. It's not that hard actually. And just get the foot onto that. It's got a captured nut in it. Yeah, once you've got it to bite, you can just do that. Actually, I managed to tighten that as well at the same time. There we go. I always tend to angle these inwards, but you know what? In a cabinet, you might want them angled outwards like that. But anyway, just for shipping, I'll do that, otherwise they'll smash off. But when you mount it in a cabinet, obviously you want to put a screw through that into the side of the, the cabinet somewhere, so that's where you'd have them pointing outwards a bit. All the while I've been working on this, I left these uh, middle ones in place, the ones that fit under the cart slot, there's four of those. It's got a bit of a mismatch of feet, this actually, you can see that that there's a bit mangled. I don't have any of these, oh well, I do have some spare somewhere, I can't find them. So, what I would say, you know, again, if these bother Stephen, he could replace them for pennies. You could buy a bag of, I don't know, 50 for a few pounds. So, let's clean that off. What I would say is if your power supply, whoever owned this, has to be at 5.5 volts, you're getting voltage drop. Um, you, you know, the power supply might not be providing enough current. Is that coming off? God, that's welded on, but 
that someone's used permanent marker. Oh no, it's coming off. Um, yeah, so I would guess the power supply used was not providing enough for uh, current or dirty connections, actually. You know, bad cable, not the right gauge, um, or a bad connection on the jammer. There we go. I think you can say that that's gone. And the final thing here, um, WD-40. So just testing some of the other features here. Headphones, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear. Yeah, you can. So yeah, just doing the volume there while I'm uh, holding that up. So yeah, headphones work, stereo, no problems at all. You get the Unibar screen there, and then if you hit start, you go start again. There we go, control input, so let's just do that. Left, right, up, down, A, B, C, D, all together and select and obviously if press start that works you know that because we've gone around the controls uh, you know we went to the next page by pressing start and if i unplug the controller and plug it into the other port it's always a useful test just to make sure that both work left right right and up's not working that's worrying why is right and up not working so I'll investigate that controller problem further in a minute. You can see the uh, dip switches down here, I think. Put them down. One, two, three, four, four five, six, seven, eight. All down. And I switch them back up again. There we go. So dip switches all work. So right now, I'm a little bit concerned about that up and right on player two. So, another day, uh, another fault. Uh, my conclusion is it needs a new Neo C1. This will be the second time I've had to replace that on the board. Um, my very first MV1, I've said, I had to replace that. I had a backup run fault, I fixed that. I had something else wrong with it, I fixed that. And then it had um, problems with P2 start on that one. On this one here, as you've seen, well, I think I showed, it's up and right, don't work. If I power this on, yeah, for what I'm trying to show you, I don't even need to have the test on. The controls will work all the time. So, I mean, if I press, uh, we've got the these packs here, this resistor capacitor network inside it. And if I, hang on, move the stick around, hang on. That's up. So, I don't know if you can see there, it's going high, low. Stay, it's high as default, plus up, low. It's the same with right, so the resistor capacitor packs aren't a problem. And I've actually measured, I've gone as far as turning the board upside down, measuring resistance mode between the first pin and then every other pin, and the end pin and every other pin, and then between the, the a pin and then I'm next to it, that one, the one next to it, that one, the one next to it, and comparing each resistor pack, and they're all absolutely identical. Sorry, I keep saying resistor pack, it's got a capacitor in there as well, but it's not those. It's not those, those are our common problem with the, the inputs. It's actually this, I'll stick the pin out there so you can see which pin. I'm probing, uh, but hang on. Yeah, I need to use the magnification to do this, but it's one of the ones up here actually. Hang on. And I'm pressing right, so it's reaching here. So it has to be this. The other clue with that, and I saw the exact same fault on my 1F said, is when you go into the diagnostics to look at the control inputs, as soon as you get into that page, more often than not, it shows one play on the left, two play on the right, and the right is on and then it goes off on its own, even though you've not got a controller in. That is a clue that it is the 245 internally to that for that port, because there's a few of them, isn't there, for the, the ports here. You'd have emerged the, the, two, the HC245 buffering there, the transceivers, into this chip, which is, in my mind is always a fatal mistake unless you've got super reliable silicon, you know, something that's got ESD protection and all the rest of it. And ultimately that's probably what it is. It's probably the jammer upside down or someone fed 12 volts into the right input and 12 volts into the up input or something, something like that. Um, so yeah, it's fairly common for control problems to kill the C1. This is a donor board from Mike Pearman that uh, there'll be another video of this at some point. I just haven't finished off. There's two of these and they both had balked in D0. So you can see pad missing, pad missing, lots and lots of damaged uh, pads and traces. Now I think the C1s are all right. You can see it's been off here already this. Um, that was to diagnose the other board. And I think both C1s were okay. So anyway, you can see I've got some caps to say they just check that port.
right so i've got a metal can under here as usual now with this it, to avoid any damage to the pcb instead of just using hot air on its own i'm going to use the last bit of this low melting point solder i'll have to get some more dead expensive this as well i saw that i think uh, vince had a tube on his channel with lots of pieces of it and it, i think that's about like 80 quids worth or something it's incredible how expensive it is so yeah reuse the piece of captain tape there just to protect that a little bit we're not going to use much hot air or not need much hot air i don't think uh, once we've got this on uh, you can see down here can you see i did reflow it looks a bit crusty but i reflowed just to make sure it wasn't a bad connection it isn't um so yeah it needs to come off i'm sure that's it i'm sure that's the fault so let's get these two big bits hopefully and that'll be enough and i'm just gonna have a couple of small bits here actually if i can cut it because it goes all over the place and obviously you don't need as much as i've got there so say this thing's become a nightmare to dispense That'll do, I only need a little bit. We may not even need the hot air, actually. Let's just, uh, let's just see, see how we go on. There we go. And let's just bodge that into there. And try... We've got some up here. I really should have had a bit of flux all the way around the edge and then it would spread better. But anyway, you can see I've managed to get that. All down the sides there. You need less heat for less time and then it will just slide off. Well, that's the plan. Bear in mind this uh, low melt point solder has been mixed with some normal solder previously as well. So it's perhaps not as good as brand new. Say three sides are kind of there, this one's uh, not quite there now. Those three are there. Right, let's do that one. There we go. Look at that. That's not took much effort there. Not too much heat either. And the final side here, you'll note, you know, you can go that way. I mean, I'll show you, it's a bit risky. If you get the iron hot enough and just go gently, 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 not press hard, you can go that way. But it's better, I find, to go the, the, uh, the orientation that the pad is longest. That makes sense. Because if you do get stuck, you don't just wrench it off generally. It's, I don't know, it seems to be more forgiving when you pull in the direction where it has more adhesion to the board, if that makes sense. So that's why here I'm having to go this way around and go this way up, hang on. Yeah, try not to eat too long. The least amount of heat is what you're aiming for really, just, just enough to get it hot enough to melt and to absorb the solder. Now this hasn't had the uh, awful uh, solder on it, it's just been normal solder. So what I will typically do here is add some uh, flux to the desolder braid. If you've got decent desolder braid with it in, you obviously don't need to do that. And I'm not sure this tip is going to help here because it's a really huge tip. What I tend to do is try and hold it with my nail like that, yeah, and focus on one side just gently. Gently, gently, gently. Don't put any pressure at all or you'll bend the pins. But hopefully you could see just from that first pass there, I think we... Got all the solder, so that side's good. One down. So I'll try pulling sort of, uh, hang on, this way. I think my finger's going to get a bit burnt here. You could use something like helping hand. You know, some sort of little vice or something, just something to hold it gently while you do that. The flux can help it wick all the way up further, so you could just add more flux instead of cutting it back, but anyway. 
same again really softly 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 if you put any pressure on you'll bend pins it out of position that side's done as well so let's flip around that way same here you hear that gentle squeaking noise that's what I listen for because if you don't get in that you know it's not actually kind of absorbing and it's not hot enough when you get that just gentle squeak as you slide it up there you know that just with the, the light amount of weight there's some friction going on so it's not doing it there now it is not sure the end pins got it there and in fact you can see the end pins didn't uh, didn't didn't do anything so we'll just do a little bit of that on those end pins that's it I think if we just uh, have a look at that you can see it looks pretty good. You get bits of solder, obviously, up the top and around the edges. In fact, that's not bad at all, actually. Even the pins look pretty straight. So, I mean, at this stage now, what I would be tempted to do, what I usually do, is put it on a flat surface. Let me just see if I've got a, there we go, a PCB. That's ideal. Uh, a Neo Geo one, created by me, <laughs> funnily enough. And uh, put it on a flat surface like that. We know all the solder is off on the underside. So, at this stage, what I would probably do is just hold it down like this and just get on the very edge of the pins and just press down gently not hard just gently yeah and you're kind of just making sure that it's, it's as flat as it can be before you apply it onto the uh, the board but hard surface is really important uh, and obviously something hard to push these pins down Other people will probably just throw it straight on and not worry too much, but then you'll get bumpy solder. If you get it nice and flat like that, trust me, that is really super flat now. Um, so the final thing really is just to put it in place and then just inspect as it's lined up to make sure none of the pins are bent out of position. But I think before I do that, I'm just going to clean the underside. Because believe it or not, that little bit of flux there, it's rock hard. So what happens is it stands it off the board. Yeah, it'll stand off by a tiny bit where that flux is. Right, so that ain't bad alignment actually. If you uh, look at the pins on all four sides, they are aligned, I think. So I'm attempting to show you me anchoring this. I don't know whether this is going to get blocked by me or whether you can see. I think you can see there. So just checking straight on all four sides. And I'm just going to bring the iron in onto this giant pad here. This is where these are really useful and flow copious amounts of solder. If it'll flow, it's not flowing. Look, let's just turn this around. Let me just wipe the solder off there. Actually, let's try again. Let's try from this angle. Come on, flow. This is where that other tip. There you go. That other tip I had is far better. Something like this, a giant wedge tip, is quite hard for anchoring uh, on the small ICs like this. So I'm just checking. Yeah, they're all okay here on this side. So again, oh, hang on, see me move it then. Let's just check again. Yeah, see, it just needs moving that way and that, that way a little bit. Right, I'm confident that's straight. Let's just come down here, touch this one, and anchor that. There we go. So we've now got uh, two points anchored. You can just touch it and make sure it, it is anchored. Uh, now, at that point, I will always, on a quad flat pack, press it, heat the one pin, Pressing quite hard. Yeah, hold, 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 release. And then I will do exactly the same thing on this side. Uh, I'm going to have to do this left-handed, actually. Again, press it down before you start, but don't be pushing at an angle. You might make it slide. And just heat. Hold it down. And then release. Uh, and everything there looks totally straight, totally flat, well aligned. Uh, and just double-checking, pin one, pin one, yeah. Trust me, it'd be a nightmare if you got three quarters way around it and went, uh-oh, pin one's on the wrong side. Because, you know, rework, taking these off and on, off and on, off and on, that's where you lose pads. You might be all right the first two or three times, or maybe just the first time, and then the second time, no, the board will go, nah, I'm not having any of that, here's a pad for you. So again, I'm going to try and film it, I may block the shot, I don't know, you may see my head, 
let's uh, start up here I think so let's get some solder and we'll start on that side have a little drag along here a bit more solder I think bob in bob out have a little slide yeah that's not too bad actually there is a bridge there I can see it from here Now I can go one of the sides where it's anchored now because I'm not worried because we've got this top side anchoring it as well as wherever I did it over there. So I'm just going to bob in and bob out I think. This uh, tip kind of lends itself to that in terms of the shape of it. It's in by the resistor part there. Let's just try a slide. Ugh. Now I've got the new Antex now, I could actually use the Antex, but let's just see, we've pretty much done it, look. We've got a bridge there, let's just get the solder off the tip, and... I can't get in there because of that blooming resistor pack, there we go. So I haven't tried it yet, I did just uh, reflow though with the Antex because you know what, whilst the uh, solder looks alright from the top as you can see, just at the back so between some of the pins it looked like maybe it had not uh, balanced out properly. So yeah I'm going to just clean around this with a toothbrush now because you know what there's a lot of flux in between the pins and I can't really see with 100% certainty whether we've got any bridges or not. Now you could do connectivity tests. But you know what, the last thing I want to do now is get bogged down with having to check uh, 100 and something pins on that. 100, isn't it? 100 pin. 100 pins on there to see if they're bridged um, on the meter. It's far easier if you clean it and then just look. Because you can generally see, you know, I'm quite, I've got quite relatively good at being able to tell whether there are any bridges just by uh, magnification. So, uh, the moment of truth is, is this balked completely or will it work? One thing I did just do is just use hot air on that, just gently, to dry up the IPA. So, you know, it's stone cold here. And I don't think I have any shorts, but I can't be 100% uh, sure. I just don't know whether that chip works. Right, let's plug into port 1. Right, so that's works. Press start. Start works. So, player 1. Left, right, up, down. A, B, C, D. Select start. So that works. Come back round again. So the important thing is port 2, so if I unplug controller, plug into port 2, try left, right, yes, up, down, oh yes, one, B, C, D, select start, fantastic, so it was a success. So that's fantastic, uh, now of course this doesn't just do controller inputs, so let's switch it off, let's get a cart in, I think some of the sound, uh, you know, there's an AT arbitration is controlled by the C1, I think. So let's get these two cars in here. Oh yes! Finally, I'm at the end, I think. Just a little bit of cleaning around there, we're done. What a relief. Yeah, that's gone to Metal Slug 5. There we go, back together again. So now I will test it. Oh, this is seriously the MVS that keeps on giving. The calendar is back. After all the time of it not being a fault, now the calendar is back again after I put lid back on. So, well, in some ways I'm glad because you know what? When you get problems, just go away from a bit of cleanup work. When you think you've not really cleaned anything that should be related, you're like, hmm, is it intermittent? Well, it turns out the calendar is intermittent. There's an F0 uh, over here. Which relates to it? There's the 4990. We replaced the crystal earlier. So I'm thinking it's going to be to do with the HC32. I think it taps off from a gate here. That may be why it started working. I suspect it's going to be one of these uh, three vias here. It could even be one of those there, I think. So I printed off this diagram that I got from the Neo Geo forum years ago. 7 HC32 pin 11. Let's hope it is this one. Because that could be the issue. Because the only other connections are F0, 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 battery, 
and the crystal. Well, the crystal's all right. It's got a new crystal on it. So it could be the chip. Could be the chip that's in cement. Um, but yeah, I'm hedging my bets on the HC32 pin 11. And I'm not sure I captured the error before. So here it is. Hopefully, what's it? Not error now. No, there it is. Calendar. Yeah. Address. Nothing. There's nothing. No diagnostic information. So it could get to the diagram, and it might give us a bit more verbosity there. But anyway, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, it's that one, and if I measure to the 4990, yeah, we have a join, it could be that gate, so it's uh, fourth from the top there, let's just logic probe that, and see what, see what that says, got a high and a high, it was a high, oh it's alright now, now it's alright, oh that's just really annoying, as you can see there, you know what, I'm thinking it's that HC32. I don't think it's the actual connectivity there. I actually think that HC32 has got a bit of a bodgy gate on it or something because it's strange, isn't it, how probing it? No, it's all right. Hang on a minute, I think it's actually switched self-test off. That's what's happened here. Now you're gonna hold ABC down, like that, and then we go here. Yeah, look, disable hardware test to switch itself off. So, we're gonna, no, we didn't get the calendar error there, yeah. Oh, this is going to be an SOB, this. Because now it's not erroring. Oh, there we go. There we go. Right, let me just check that chip again. Right, the 4990 is coming off. Because I've probed the pins from the F0. Everything looks all right there. Um, the one thing I can't do is the input to the HC32. Can't work out where it's coming from. It's somewhere near the B1. I've traced it that far, but I'm not sure from where uh, you know where it originates. So yeah, I've just removed the donor from uh, the one F with hot air. Let's just remove this one with hot air. I might need to remove more of that padding underneath here. I'm not sure. I think I did actually free up around this here on the underside. But we'll just heat this with some hot air. Let's get this off. Get a socket on, and try swapping them around. And the gate was pretty much off. That's it. So we'll just clean around there. I unblocked from the underside. I used some flux and braid originally. That didn't do anything really. So then I just used the uh, engineer to solder the pump. Right, so I have a socket here. I might need to uh, widen these holes. I don't know, let's just see. So pin one's at the top here. Oh no, straight on, look. Oh, finally worked it out. It's driven me nuts, this. It's uh, another Occam's razor. Simple as explanation, be the most likely. And I noticed, uh, what's his name? Uh, started using that. He mentioned it on the uh, Occam's Razor on one of his videos. Um, Amstrad guy. Noel. Noel's Retro Lab. Yeah, he mentioned it as well. I don't know whether he saw one of my videos, but I've mentioned Occam's Razor so many times. Uh, usually in relation to uh, things like this, actually. So, I measured the voltage on the clock chip over there. The top uppermost pin. 3.7 volts for. Hmm, that's not right. It's supposed to go to the battery terminal over here. And I'll show you if I just do a measurement. Hang on. Measure from the positive to that pin. No join. Uh, now there's a corroded wire here that goes to the VCC on here. And I wondered if it was taking it from there, like there was a join between there and here. And there's supposed to be. And if I measure from the pad, nothing. If I measure from the wire, can you hear? That's it. It's that via, it's that via that's corroded. Um, I've got uh, that via through uh, there. This is gonna be incredibly difficult because I need to try and avoid the socket, but solder this uh, cable. Did I say via? I've got the cable through the via, kind of. Need to just get some solder onto there. I am touching the socket a little bit there. I'm measuring uh, pin one here between ground and pin one on the 4990. And if you look at the meter, 5 volts, 
spot on five volts it should be five volts not four volts not three volts as it was it should be five volts and it was just the uppermost pin on here the vcc pin there's a trace on the uh, that goes to a via there the via was super crowded you saw that earlier and uh, yeah it was working after i cleaned it all up and i was like ah oh, fixed it and then obviously it's just deteriorated uh, the crazy thing is the trace on the underside comes up here like this right next to the vcc pin and then comes through a via to the vcc pin there's nothing on the other side blocking it they could have just soldered it on the other side and that would not be an achilles heel here right next to the battery so I don't know, it makes you wonder if things like that are deliberate so that they know the battery's going to leak and that will damage that trace because I can't understand why it was not on the other side of the board it's crazy bringing it up on this side of the board so uh, thou shalt check voltages if I check that voltage there the backup is four pins joined together the utmost pin pin one where I just measured and showed you we had five volts now two, three all four of those joined to there yeah now it says VCC backup battery now there was no connectivity to the battery but that was when I started looking at that via next to the uh, HC32 thinking is that what, where the issue is and lo and behold you know I fixed it in no time but I could have saved myself pulling the 4990 off I'm glad I never got around to removing the F0 because you know what that was my next thought I was convinced there was something wrong with the, the F0 and actually the uh, the thing that I spent a while messing around with was this the connection from the uh, pin 11 of the HC32 it's an OR gate but both of the inputs are joined together yeah and they both go to a resistor near the B1 so I was like oh it must be something to do with that and it was, I, I noticed it just you know it starts low when you power it on just for a split second and it goes high stays high so I'm like well what's the point in putting that through here it is just buffering sorry not through here through the HC32 it's just buffering and it's a power power like a power on signal and that power on signal comes from B1 uh, so that's the purpose of that actually um, you know the originating signal that comes in, into the HC32 and then it gets buffered and the output of that goes into here so the B1 is responsible for that power on signal But it is quite simple, there's literally nothing else it could have been. If it wasn't what I've just discovered here, which I could have said been swapping that, then it would have been the F0. It can't have been anything else really, unless your crystal's bad, but we ruled that out first. Right, so here's the final, final, final look at the board. We've been around this loop three times now. It's ridiculous. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty clean. There's, there might be the odd fingerprints. There might be the odd little bit of dirt that I've missed. Oh, you can see how shiny that C1 looks there, look at that. <laughs> You can certainly tell that, that has been swapped out. Um, yeah, everything is looking okay. So yeah, this area is set quite well here. Um, yeah, it's come out about as good as can be expected, all things considered, I think. Uh, and the slots are good as new. So yeah, I have tested everything on this. I've just tested the memory card, haven't filmed it. I just couldn't be asked. <laughs> Uh, if I'm honest, uh, yeah, so I tested the memory slot, we tested both control ports again a number of times. Calendar error, now there's nowhere to be seen, thank goodness. Uh, yeah, that's socketed, yeah, that's socketed as well, that's a mistake. Yeah, we'll stick it somewhere down here that's fairly inconspicuous, I think, of a, a cleanish bit. Uh, just to stick it on the edge there, there you go, it's not quite straight, but there we go, fixed, 2022. Stick it in that slot, thank you because as I mentioned before Unibars 4 you don't get sound in slot 2 if you're only using a single car yep seems to be working let's turn the music up a bit it's only a single speaker it sounds awful through that one speaker I think you've got to press the credit yeah I've got to press the credit button and the modem in Press the slot button, didn't I? There we go. Let's go novice. In fact, uh, yeah, that novice will be alright. It's ages since I've played this on the MBS actually. I've been playing this a lot on uh, PlayStation 4. Play this yourself and get some Dreamcast. <laughs> oh, lost my shields already. It's so much harder on easy. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it really is. I can fly through this first level without losing a life on the medium difficulty. So the next thing we'll try here is uh, Xeno Crisis. I did a video on that, a few videos on that actually, as we progressed through the, well, release of it. And uh, obviously Stephen has got a copy of this, so it'd be a good idea just to test it, make sure it does work. Obviously this isn't his copy, switch it on. Sweet. It's been a few weeks since I've played this actually. I'll just let that play for a sec while I'll take some credits here. Let's it start. Make your selection. Commencing operations. Your mission begins now. Look at the size of that thing. Quick look on the undersides because I'm not sure I showed you this, but I tinned up the vias affected here. And obviously these vias are all right. If they were really corroded, you might want to block them with a piece of kinar and solder on both sides. And I did that on one or two of them. Um, there's that connection on the 4990. You know, this thick trace comes up here, and that's the one that goes all the way to the 4990. Um, and uh, you know, it goes through the via and then joins to that pin. Whereas there's nothing in between. It could just join here. Uh, anyway, that is pretty clean. So the only thing I haven't fully removed is this piece up here. We did clean around here because we had that chip off, but uh, yeah, if Stephen is bothered by that, he can have fun games spending an hour or so trying to remove that. So I hope you found that interesting. Uh, just the two uh, faulty things really, a battery which obviously goes 90% of the problems here, and uh, a C1, which I will remove all the uh, solder from that and fit that uh, onto another board at some point. It's a single player one, port two's got problems obviously. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.